Hello everyone, my name is Mirari, artist from the team Cutecats, and I'm going to show you the game we have been working on these past months, Avani. Avani is a 2D open world game in which you will explore the land guided by a spirit trapped in an ancient sword. You must fight to defeat powerful enemies, to recover its power and end the evil plague in the world. Avani's main mechanics are dash and attack. With the dash, Avani is able to dodge enemies and even use it as a replacement of a jump. Avani can also perform a range attack, a combo and a special attack apart from the basic one to either fight more nimbly or even overcome puzzles. There are four types of enemies. The slime. This is the simplest enemy. The slimes crawl around and move to attack the player when they are close and change size when they are attacked by the player a few times. When they are big, they engulf the player and when they are small, they hit them. The teleporter. These enemies do not move. They stay still until the player gets too close. Then they teleport away. However, the player can slash or shoot at them and kill them after a few hits. These enemies shoot when the player is at a further distance than for teleporting. The mole follows the player from underground, where it is invulnerable. When it's below them, they jump to attack, and the player must evade it. If done correctly, the attack will fail, and the mole will get stuck in the ground, where it will be vulnerable to the player's attacks. And the last one, the spinner. This enemy spins in the player's direction, and bounces when it hits walls. In this spinning state, it is invulnerable. But once it has bounced with some walls, it will stop spinning to recover, moment where it will be vulnerable. In Avani, your final goal is going through the enemies and obstacles to recover the spirits that had been released from the sword. Enjoy exploring the different zones, collecting treasures, and encounter the final boss so the civilizations can go back to their normal state. Welcome all, my name is Anton Gorroño, I'm the art producer of Friendly Duck Studio and I will guide you today through all the gameplay features of Galactic Circus. Galactic Circus is a 2D stealth platform game based on solving situations. This by evading and defeating the dangerous aliens that have taken over the circus. For doing so, the protagonist, the knife thrower of the circus, will use his knife throwing skills and a really special knife. So, here I introduce you the Knife Thrower. To achieve his goal, this Kinker has the ability to run, jump, climb ladders, and hide. 
this for the basic actions. But here it comes the icing of the cake, the alien knife, which our protagonist has stolen from the aliens. Not only it allows our knife thrower to teleport when stuck in a surface, but it is also equipped with elemental absorption, which basically gives him the power of controlling fire and electricity for sorting different type of puzzles and obstacles. But this won't come easy for our target shooter, because he will have to face various enemies along his heroic journey. Contortionist. It is the most basic of the aliens, it has very basic movements as it just moves around inside the same platform and it attacks you with a short range attack when spotted. Though, be careful if you encounter more than one at the same time, you will have to be quick. Juggler. This enemy could probably be seen as the most basic one, taking into account that it does not even move and it only attacks you if you get into that medium long range it covers. But it has a detail to it that makes it differential. You must use an electrified knife to kill it, otherwise it will repel your attack. A strongman or immortal. As I have just spoiled you, this frog-esque weightlifter can be killed, so you must be wise and use hiding and destruction methods to avoid it. In terms of movement, it will just patrol from one place to another. If it spots you, you can be ready for the popcorns. And for the last act, we have the flamethrower. This creature wanders around, burning some things here and there. The attack is a burning flame exhaled from the deepest insides of his lungs, in a medium range. It can only be killed from the back. Thank you for listening, until the next performance. Hello everyone, we are Hangover Studios and we are presenting our new game, Hanyo. Hanyo is a 2D side scrolling combat game that tells the story of Hiroko, a young samurai girl from ancient Japan. After witnessing her village being destroyed and slaughtered by the Oni, Hiroko has only one goal, revenge. So she will have to go on a journey to find the Oni and kill him. On this journey you will encounter warriors sent by the Oni, so you will have to defeat them in order to continue. To avoid getting killed and defeat these enemies, you will have to make use of Hiroko's core mechanics. Attack dash, block, and parry. These mechanics also need to be combined with three different cards, high, middle, and low. This means that you will have to decide between attack or block, but also between the three cards, always taking into account the mechanics and guards of the enemy. There are three types of enemies. The swordsman has the same abilities as Hiroko, except for the dash and parry, 
In order to defeat him, you will have to attack him on a different guard so that he doesn't block you. You can also block his attacks when you're on the same guard as him, and if you block him very fast, a parry will be performed, which will leave the swordsman stunned and easier to kill. The heavy swordsman is unblockable, and the only way to defeat him is in his vulnerable state, which takes place after he performs his attack. You will have to dash in order to avoid getting hit, and after that, attack him before he goes back to the invulnerable pose. The spearman only has two kinds of attacks, the high and the low. He won't be able to block you, but his attacks are longer, so in order to defeat him, you will have to consider the distance to perform an attack and block him fast if he attacks. The last enemy is the Oni. You will encounter him two times. The first time will be at the start of the game. Here you won't be able to kill him as you are too weak. But later, you will encounter him again in the final level with a boss fight. The combat will be on one hand like a normal combat with your same mechanics, and on the other hand he will use special attacks. Such as the demon attack, which is unblockable and has to be avoided with a dash, or the projectile attack. Hiroko will travel through different landscapes based on traditional Japanese ink paintings. Some of them will be in special conditions, such as the town at night on fire where it all starts, or the barn field on a storm. On these journeys you will also find lakes, bridges that break, impressive waterfalls, and beautiful sunsets on the top of the mountains. Join Hiroko on her journey to avenge her people. Also, will it be enough? Hello everyone, my name is Iker, member of Pigment Crew, and I'm here to present the game we have been working on, Veggie Menace. Veggie Menace is a run and gun game, where you will have to traverse levels by defeating hordes of enemies, collecting power-ups, and defeating different bosses, in order to stop an out-of-control vegetable invasion. Our main protagonist is Maggie, a little traveling witch who has been hired to deal with the invasion due to her strong magic powers. Maggie's main abilities are shooting with her staff, jump, dash, and some other tricks she might have under her sleeves. There are 7 types of enemies, let's see how they behave. The mushroom is the most common enemy, they will run and jump in order to attack Maggie with their teeth. The corn cops have the ability to shoot and they will need to stop from time to time in order to reload. The green tomato will jump to your position and will explode to deal airy damage. In a similar fashion, the red tomato will also explode, but this time they will run straight forward. Red tomatoes are immune to bullets, but they are not the brightest with their attacks, so try to run them into a wall would be our best strategy against them. There are two types of radishes, one that shoots and one that will dive down in order to explode. Finally, we have the onion. This enemy is a tank, so it will be more difficult for Maggie to live with them. 
continuing with our main mechanics, there are three types of power-ups available in the game that you will be able to obtain by setting trap villagers throughout the levels. The Electric Stone. This power-up will overcharge Maggie's staff, making it shoot at very fast speeds. The Water Stone. It will make the staff shoot 5 droplets of water in different directions, making it much easier to clean the screen of enemies. The Fire Stone. This will make Maggie shoot explosive projectiles, letting us defeat multiple enemies with a single shot. At the end of each level, there will be a final score screen, giving you statistics about your performance, a score, and a grade. Will you be able to obtain S rank at all three levels? Saving the kingdom from an invasion this big is a very difficult task to do alone, so Maggie can summon a helper, Hilda. That's right, you can play with a friend by local co-op, either by using controllers or even playing in a single keyboard. Hilda will be able to join at any point of the adventure without any intermediate steps or menus. It's plug and play, so there's no excuse not to join forces and save the kingdom together. Maggie's adventure will start at Betiland, the town where the invasion started. She will continue by a forest overtaken by the vegetables at the outskirts of the town, to finally reach the castle of the Pumpkin Queen, the one leading the invasion. Vegemans' story starts at Vegeland's Vegetable Contest. In this contest, villagers compete to try and grow the biggest vegetable possible. But some of the contestants have cheated with a magic potion that has granted the vegetables with life. They have been invading the town and its surroundings, so the villagers plead Maggie for help. This is where Maggie's quest starts. Collaborate with a friend, or fight alone against the vegetable forces. We will see if you are strong enough to outperform their newborn empire. Hello, we are Team Robocorp and this is our game, Magnet. This game is a cooperative action shooter in which players will come from the future to save the world from an imminent global threat. The explosion of a gigantic nuclear microwave inside the most secret experimental laboratory on the planet. The objective of the game is to go through three different levels. In order to do so, players will have to clean rooms filled with enemies. While exploring the levels, players will learn that there are different kind of rooms. Some may have more than one wave of enemies, and in order to unlock the doors and keep progressing, they will have to defeat them all. There are some rooms where the players will have to cooperate to activate objectives while dealing with other enemies or environment hazards such as cannons or the holes they may fall through making them get into the radioactive liquid underneath.
If a player dies, make sure you have some money with you, as you'll need it to revive your friend. That's what friends are for, right? There are also enemies that will run towards the players, forcing them to avoid the attack by moving, but they will have to be careful and pay attention to their surroundings. You really don't want them to fall into the water. New room, new enemy. Tanks shoot guided missiles that aren't robot friendly. In some places of the level, special elevators are available to go back to the first room. In here, players are able to buy items from vending machines such as stat upgrades or weapons by using the money dropped by enemies. Once they have collected all of the keys in the level, they will unlock the final door and go to the final room, which consists in a very big fight by waves to test the players and make sure they are ready to move on. In the second level, players will gain the ability to use the hook, which will increase their mobility options and allow for new gameplay dynamics. It allows players to hook to objects and go through gaps that were thought to be impossible. That's all from our side. Thanks a lot for watching and we hope you have fun saving the world with our two little guests, Mac and Ned. Are you plugged in yet? Because it's time to go. This cyber world is infested to the brim with these Creatures, we are going to have to rid them from this drive. You have your slash. You have your gun. You have your dash. Try and make the most of them here. Good luck out there. You are going to need it. Hello everyone, my name is Johnny Barra, a gameplay programmer and the build master of the team The Second Option. And this is the game our team has been working on for these past few months, CyberD. 
CyberD is a 3D action platformer game where the player slays all the enemies that challenge him to death, clearing entire rooms full of enemies in order to advance to the next room. The three main mechanics of the player are melee, dashing, and shooting. Melee and shooting consume energy and are used to defeat enemies, be it from close quarters with the melee or staying in one place and shooting them down with bullets using the shooting ability. The dashing isn't used to defeat enemies, but can be used to avoid attacks from incoming enemies. The energy to use the melee and the shooting recovers itself automatically. Whenever a player enters a room, barriers will appear in its entrance and its exit, trapping the player inside until it defeats all incoming enemies. Inside the room, there will be a number of spawners that will generate enemies in waves until the player defeats all the waves. Some spawners may also be linked to turrets and will keep spawning enemies until the turrets are defeated. When the player clears a room of enemies, apart from lifting the barriers, it will receive a certain amount of coins depending on the performance of the player in that room. The amount of coins depends on the accuracy of the attacks uh, of the player on the enemies, the combo of the attacks uh, on the enemies, and the amount of time it took the player to clear the entire room. These coins can be used to buy extra health, restore the lives, give the player more energy for each attacks, or increase the range of the melee attack. The zombie is the simplest of all the enemies. It just chases after the player, and when it's in a certain range, it launches at it, attacking it. The zombie isn't very strong, but it can be very difficult to deal with in great numbers. The turret is a more challenging enemy than the zombie. Unlike it, it can't move, but doesn't need to, since it attacks the player from afar shooting bullets of his own. The turret is invulnerable to melee attacks, so the player must use its own bullets to defeat it. The turret has 4 hit points, and whenever it receives damage, it becomes invulnerable for a few seconds and generates a few zombies. The amount of zombies that it generates after each hit increases the less hit points that it has. The bull is a much trickier enemy. It chases after the player, like the zombie, and when it's at a certain distance from the player, it launches at it. But its launch attack is much faster than the zombie. The bull is also immune to all melee and bullet attacks coming from all sides except when it's hidden from its back. The player must use this to its advantage, waiting for the bull to launch at them, dodge it, and then attack it from behind. The main placer is different from the rest of the enemies. Like the turret, it's invulnerable to melee attacks, and it wanders through the room in a square-like pattern. Whenever it reaches one of the edges of that uh, square pattern, it throws mines along the room that will hinder the player's movements. The only way to defeat the mine placer is to shoot it down with a bullet, and being wary of the mines it will place along the room. The final objective of the game is to clear all levels and rooms and reach the ending of the game after defeating all the enemies. But will you even reach that last room and from the last level? Let's find out!
Arrullo is a 3D first-person horror game where the player is inside a farmhouse with different monsters that will try to kill him. In order to survive and discover the mystery of that place, Francisco, the main character, will have to hide from these monsters while investigating the farmhouse. When Francisco wakes up, he finds himself in his bedroom. Due to the darkness, the player will need to pick a lantern in order to traverse through the corridors. The lantern is the main mechanic of the game. It is necessary to light up the path. The player will be able to take it in and out, or even light it up. However, after some time, it will shut down and the player will need to find oil in order to recharge it and be able to use it again. In some puzzles, you will be able to use chalk in order to draw freely on the blackboard, which will be required to solve certain riddles. The game is based on several puzzles that the player will need to solve in order to advance. Some of them require finding a lock combination. Others drawing on a blackboard. Or even sneaking up while avoiding obstacles in order to not be detected. Some puzzles will be key to the development of the story, as they will reveal why the house is hostile towards Francisco. The game will be separated into three different levels. The hallways, the studio, and the catacombs. Each level will be darker and crazier than the other. You need to traverse them, investigate the different rooms and find the objects that will help you find out Francisco's story and the mystery behind the house. While exploring the farmhouse, Francisco will find several paintings across the house. In some of these, a hideous creature is lurking to find the right moment to capture you, the soldier. To prevent this, the player will have to react fast and light the candle as fast as possible with the use of a quick time event. This action costs oil, so you need to take care of how you use the lantern. If done properly, he will vanish. If not, he will capture you and bring you into the painting. When Francisco is close to the soldier, he will be cold and start shivering. In the catacombs, you get harassed by a new enemy. The bull. This monster is divided into two parts, the head and the body. The head is the part that will detect you, whereas the body will be haunting you. The player has to avoid being seen by the eyes of the head, otherwise the bull will wake up and will run after you. When this happens, you need to find a place to hide from it. Sounds can also wake the bull, so you need to take care of where you step. Going through the farmhouse's hallways and the underground crypt, a red mist will suddenly emerge, revealing the lullaby, a monstrous creature who will chase you until she captures you. If you want to survive, you need to run away and hide from her. Thank you very much for listening. We are Blank Canvas Studio and we hope you enjoy the presentation and the game.
Hello guys, my name is Daniel Saif, producer and visual effects and gameplay programmer of Miraculous Industries. Today I'm going to present to you our game, Igeya. Igeya is a 3D introspective puzzle solving and adventure game in which the player must overcome a series of challenges that could lead to anxiety. It's scheduled for release in summer 2022 in PC. So, what is this game about? After falling in an unknown cave, a girl will have to find her way out to a set of floors and stairs in which, after collecting some chess pieces, she will unlock higher floors and more demanding challenges. During her path, she will encounter certain objects that she can interact with. In some cases, you will have to make a single press to interact with them, while in others, you will have to keep holding the interact button for it to remain toggled. The first one of these interactables is the ghost type. When it gets activated, it will change its shape from opaque and solid to transparent and crossable, or vice versa. Next, we have the slider that, when used, it will move from one end to another, allowing the player to use it as a platform. Rotators will also act as platforms. While some of them will rotate in one direction until you change it, others will only rotate when interacting with them. After that, we have the lasers. The beams will have to reach the corresponding portals in order to unlock the next areas, and for that, the player will have to play with a series of reflectors so that the beam bounces correctly. Finally, there's the magnets. These interactables will have a positive or a negative pole depending on the rays they emit. These poles will be the ones that will decide whether they get attracted or repelled when interacting with them. There are two types of magnets, static and dynamic ones. However, completing the puzzles might get challenging at some point. These moments will be the ones that will cause anxiety to the player and will be represented by a thick mist floating around. While being anxious, walking will be more difficult, and the perception of the objects around will get affected, which will cause completing puzzle tasks way harder. That's all from me now. Stay tuned for the release of the game, which will also include a VR version for a more immersive experience and, in the name of Miraculous Industries, we hope that you enjoy our game. Thank you for listening, and see ya!
Hello everyone, this is Team Cactus, and we are proud to present to you Shadow Racer, a game that follows a unique adventure that combines driving, battling, and exploring. In this game, the player follows the story of a simple but brave car that progressively becomes stronger and unlocks new powers. In this world, in order to become the next Shadow Racer, a vehicle must master the four car elements. The first element is drifting, and it will be available from the very start of the game. With it, players can make sharper turns, allowing for better control while driving. The player is free to drive around, making twists and turns, avoiding obstacles, and jumping from dangerous heights. From time to time, cinematics will play following the protagonist's story. The second element is the flash. It is used to power up switches to open doors. After traversing the first zone, the player will arrive to the hub area that is in the middle of the world. Here, they can talk to extravagant characters that wander around the dark land and get hints on how to advance to the next section. The third element is the turbo a powerful upgrade that the past Shadow Racers used to reach places nobody else could. The player can also use it to take advantage over their enemies in battle. Another use of the Flash is to interact with the environment around the world, like the explosive basketballs. Also, the Flash can be used to destroy enemies in battle. The possessed cars will attack the player, but their origin is up to them to discover. In order to unlock the bumper, the player must pass the ultimate test to know how much they developed their reflexes and their mastery with the controls, a race. In this race, they can take advantage of the terrain there is around to win. The bumper, the fourth element, allows the player to destroy rocks to access places they could not before and step into the core of the world of darkness. Will you have what it takes to become the next Shadow Racer? Find out yourself trying out the game.
Hello everybody, today we are presenting our latest project to you, Arclight B. Arclight B is a game with a minimalistic neon aesthetic and a focus on rhythm-based platforming in which you control various level elements by changing the beats of the game. This is done through the beat mixer. You can select beats and put them into the beat mixer above. You have probably already noticed the red line that has been looping through the beat mixer. This line plays the beats that you have put into the beat mixer when it overlaps with them. And when a beat is played, a certain level element of the same color is activated. Beats come in various types and trigger various tiles throughout the game. The first is the moving tile, which is quite self-explanatory. It moves from point A to point B every time it is played. The second is the phasing tile. This one turns solid while its corresponding beat is being played, and you fall through it if it is not. Up next is the launch tile, which launches you into the air when it is activated. Another is the fan tile, which generates wind that pushes you in the direction that the fan tile is pointing in while its corresponding beat is being played. Lastly is the ice tile, which becomes slippery while it is activated. It lets you build up speed, allowing you to take large leaps. These tiles combined form the foundation of our game and appear throughout the three differently themed worlds that we have in our game, the techno, carnival and disco world. The techno world introduces the player to the game and has a calm atmosphere with an inviting color palette. The carnival world ramps up the difficulty and has a very festive and chaotic atmosphere with music to match. The last world is the disco world which gives a funky feeling and has contrasting eye-popping colors. Throughout these worlds you'll find many levels, among which are alternative bonus levels that change the pace of the game. We are very excited to be finally releasing our plate beat. Thanks for listening and we hope you'll enjoy our game.